Hey, everybody. Welcome to Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics, episode 18. Hey, have we ever told them which one's Jim? It's oh. you. It's him. He's Jim. I'm and Jim. I'm Alex. Yeah. I don't know if we ever. We probably have said each other's names. Yeah. At some point. Like, I might have said something like, hey, Alex, for example. Yeah, you might have said, uh, hey, Alex, I'm Jim. <laughs> right. <laughs> At some point. And then you would have said, I, 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 I know that. I think, what's wrong? Are you is all right? That, is this the seizures? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then I would have had verbal aphasia and said weird things, and you would have went, I, uh. That's Jim for you. That's yeah. what I would have said. And if we did an episode with verbal aphasia, it'd be our best episode. <laughs> next week. Yeah. Yeah. Next week we're doing verbal aphasia. So yeah. I'm going to just get wrapped on the head sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I like your chances. Yeah. Me too. Uh, hey, what do you like the shirt? Well, Hawaiian. I love it there. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's very, is that uh, a work shirt? <laughs> it is. And it also fits. <laughs> I like that it fit the background. It does fit the background. A little bit of a beachy kind of a thing going on. And uh, and I like I don't know, I think I look good in it. My um, you look very handsome. Yeah. I would buy avocados from you. <laughs> um, I am wearing a shirt uh, that actually also matches the theme behind you. Oh my, blue jean. Blue jean committee, another fake band. Fantastic. <laughs> Wow, that was some kismet. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I thought it was a, the name of a ship or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that theme. Yeah, the, the that theme. Yeah, the theme of our meandering rambles instead of the topic. The actual show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Did we tell people that yet? No. Uh, so last week, Alex picked the uh, Down Easter Alexa, which I initially called the Alexa Down Easter which wouldn't make any sense. No sense. Yeah. Um, if, if you, unless you were doing your famous foreign kid character. Right, <laughs> which people love. People From love. 35 years ago. It was, it was perfectly fine then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now it's offensive. Yeah, and the, whole, do it. <laughs> the whole hook of my foreign character kid is that he, he knew a lot of slurs, but it didn't know they were slurs, so he said all of them. Yeah, yeah. So, and people loved it. I got paid so well. Yeah. Um, do you remember? <laughs> I'm going to sidetrack us again. Fine. Uh, <laughs> we, you, uh, you and me and Paul Goebel dared each other to order at EG's in our characters. And so you were forced to order at EG's as foreign kid. <laughs> um, I don't remember which character I had. Uh, and I remember that Paul's character was the woman with the largest labia in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which was handy for him because the person at EG's didn't know what was happening. Right? But you, you had to say slurs to a <laughs> essential worker. <laughs> uh, they were less essential then to my... <laughs> it's true. Yeah. In my defense. Yes. Can I, can I tell you, by the way, how jarring it was initially? Because we're it's we're a year into the pandemic. For those of you who don't know, uh, I do stand up comedy and I work at a grocery store. And during the pandemic, I've mostly worked at a grocery store because there's not like a lot of fucking stand up going on. Um, not much that I'd be comfortable with either. Like there were shows I could have done too if I wanted to go to like uh, some dumb city that decided it's not real. <laughs> and you, and there, I know comics who did that, and I know comics who came home with coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, I doubt it. Um, but um, so I work at a grocery store. Work at the Trader Joe's. People like the Trader Joe's. How weird it was in the first four or five months to just regularly have people go, "Hey, I just really want to thank you for and just a lot of that." And it's yeah. nice up to a point, except that if you forgot for a minute that things were precarious, they'd remind you by thanking you. True. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Fair enough. Um, I uh, have not had any of that experience. <laughs> um, although we had a, l a little of it during the previous presidency, people would say to us here and there, hey, like, thank you so much for what you're doing. Because um, I work on a TV show where we criticize the previous administration. Yeah. And that was all we did. <laughs> but people were oddly thankful for it. And uh, now they just say, like, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? There's nothing to talk about now, um, which is not true. And the other thing is, uh, I couldn't be less essential. I feel like when every state put out their list of like, here's who we're going to vaccinate, most people had occasion to at least look at the list and go, well, maybe they're counting like barbers. Sure. I don't know. They see people a lot. They're sort of on a front line. And uh, I just like, I'm not looking. <laughs> I don't have to look at the list. No one needs uh, elderly TV producers. Yeah. You're on a different list. You're on a specific list for cannot get the vaccine. No, oh, yeah. Uh-uh. It's like me and six people. Yeah. In fact, when it's available to everybody, we're going to reassess. <laughs> I think they're going to just inject me with the virus. <laughs> which and rightly, like, you know yeah and it gives you something to write jokes about <laughs> yeah because from a, like, a first-hand perspective yeah because <laughs> yeah that was the glorious thing about oh you must love this i remember you telling me but i would hear it too just as a stand-up oh sure so great because you can write no it's not great it writes itself oh also, I like writing jokes while living in a country that makes sense. I yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Like, I, I don't mind disliking a politician. I don't mind knowing they're actively evil. Yeah. Fearing, like, fearing uh, retribution. Yeah. From a politician <laughs> is not good yeah. in any country, but shockingly so in this one. Yeah. Um, my big fear for this podcast was that, um, uh, and Sue brought this up, that uh, our Amazon Echoes might go crazy <laughs> all night while we talk about the Down Easter. Alexa, yeah, see? <laughs> Mine reacted uh, too. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> let's, let's see what we get. That's awesome. Uh, so you picked the Down Easter Alexa. And it's I'll my favorite song. It's your favorite? I think it's my favorite. Oh, okay. Well, Vienna, I guess Vienna is all time. And this is uh, my certainly my favorite to sing along with because you get to sing very loud. <laughs> um, and there's cool words to sing. Um, okay. But it's awesome. a really a great song. And I think I've told you my favorite is uh, uh, Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. Yeah. I like that one quite a lot. And uh, I still am a big fan of just the way you are. I, I do still like to listen to that. That's just somehow of all the songs, that seems like it's it's even older. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does seem like it. Oh, is that from the 60s? Yeah. It could easily be from the 60s. Yeah, is that or like, was he covering like a Sinatra song? Right. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, is that a that's when Buddy Holly got and did the soft stuff, right? That's a, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like True Love Ways. It's one of those songs. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, love Ways. Great song. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. If you want to cry, great song to listen to. I do want to cry. Oh, well, I have the perfect song. <laughs> My God, great. Um, this song is, uh, has a lot of noises and sounds and sound effects. <laughs> It but, does. but it doesn't, it, unlike some songs that has a lot of Latin nonsense going on, it doesn't feel overproduced to me. No, I kind of agree with that. And I think it, partly because like there's seagull sounds, for example, um, but it sounds like they're maybe done with a violin or something or a synthesizer. It's not like he just like got that album of sound effects that we all bought in college right because <laughs> we thought it'd be hilarious it sounds like it's stylized a little bit yeah 
Yeah, so I and I think that's a pretty keen little trick to pull off to do all this stuff. Yeah. To not have it feel like, damn, there's too much layered here for it to, it doesn't feel organic. This actually feels perfectly, probably also because if, so if, uh, if you listen to the lyrics, they're not doing a lot of stuff with his voice either. It's, it's not echoey. It's not, it doesn't feel like they ran it through a synthesizer or did anything. It's just him singing it. Yeah. And, and like you say, it's kind of a loud, yelly song in a, in a good way. It's, in a good uh, way. Yeah. It's a uh, lot of I, emoting. <laughs> I think he got good at, you know, he put a lot of wacky sound effects in songs forever. Uh, motorcycles and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and I think like maybe he just got better at it <laughs> or whoever's, you know, producing his stuff was like, um, yes, we can still do that but maybe we'll be do a little cleaner, a little quieter. Yeah. A little more thematic. Thematic's um, the key here cuz you know, moving out has the great motorcycle and it's it's fine it works out. It always bothered me because um I always pictured him moving and you can't do it. You can't move on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> I'm moving out. You're taking like a vase with you. <laughs> there should be more sound effects. You hear that, and then you hear another guy go, "Hey, are you going to order pizza for everybody?" <laughs> yeah, them or out. like the beeping of the truck backing up, <laughs> people honking trying to get around the truck. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, we're moving in after you. Do you mind if we look around? That. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's mostly just dialogue more than sound effects, but yeah. yeah. The song is like 14 minutes long. <laughs> the scritching of writing out a rent check. <laughs> yeah, jangly keys. I'm like, uh, oh, no, no, this is mine. I keep this one. This is yours. Okay. Uh, you know the old trick of uh, filling in all the nail holes with toothpaste? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you got yeah. that sound in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little squishing of the tube. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, it's time for a remaster. Yeah, As if uh, Bruno Bruno Mars, if you could tell Billy Joel this. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we're communicating exclusively through Bruno. Yeah, because he, as we firm, firmly established, he's one of our biggest fans. Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> so we've talked about the song and and the sounds and and such. How about you start us on the lyrics? All right, uh, I'll see. Let's see. I always love any song that starts with the word well. Well, I'm on the Down Easter Alexa and I'm cruising through Block Island Sound. I have charted a course to the vineyard, but tonight I am Nantucket bound. Um, does this mean something's already gone wrong? Yeah. Like he was going to go to Martha's Vineyard, but he's going to Nantucket instead, or is it stopping in Nantucket first and then going to the vineyard? Uh, I feel like things have gone wrong. Also, um, he's on a boat, right? Yeah. Wow. So why, do, does it make sense to be going to a vineyard on a boat? <laughs> well, I don't know how much you know about Martha's Vineyard, but it is the name of an island. It, I don't, I know nothing about it. Yeah, I didn't either until I moved to this coast and people would say they were going to the vineyard. Uh, but that means an island called Martha's Vineyard. You know, all, I've heard of Martha's Vineyard my whole damn life because any number of presidents have gone there. Yes. It's always it, somewhere they go to vacation. And I guess it makes sense because you're going to an island, no one will bother you. No one, yes. it's hard to shoot like, at you from- like A wealthy liberal enclave island okay all right so that makes sense then oh that's interesting but it's still i'm then but, <laughs> but does it make sense to go to are you delivering fish because you because you're not because this is a song about a fisherman this is not a song about a guy with money right no yeah um which is interesting because a lot of the places in that get mentioned are now places where you have to have a lot of money to live 
but I think they were previously uh, places where you would pick up supplies or gas or people to help you when you were doing your fishing. Oh, so that makes perfect sense. So you're docking in, yeah, tonight I am Nantucket bound. Um, so you'll be going to Martha's Vineyard later, you know. Presumably. You know, maybe Jimmy Carter will help you gas up. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll see Alan Dershowitz. Yeah. And he does, he does <laughs> mention gasoline in this song. He, he does. So... Um, I could be I'll right. tell you what I like immediately is that um, it's not super accessible. Like, there's a lot of jargon in the song that you maybe don't fully f understand if you're For not sure. a fisherman, and he, it just seems fine. Like, I'm fine if only fishermen know what this what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, which is kind of great. That is great. Did, he never fished, right? So he's he's in a character, right? He never, I don't think he ever did. He definitely grew up on Long Island and knew some of these people. And I know that he was very active in, uh, you know, there were a lot of protests. Uh, he was arrested actually at a protest. Oh, okay. Uh, that some of these fishermen put together to try, you know, because, you know, as the song says, their way of life is being taken away by overregulation in their estimation. And, um, you know, the crazy home prices out on the island now, they're being driven out. So yeah. there, there will be occasionally be protests at courthouses and such. And he was arrested at some such protest years ago. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Awesome, and yet also he's part of the problem because of course he has like a $50 million home <laughs> out on Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> so he's playing both sides of the fence. <laughs> but I mean, it's better than fully ignoring what you're doing, I guess. Yeah. Um, so explain the line cruising, explain Block Island Sound to me. Block Island Sound. I trying to remember exactly where it is. A, a sound, as you, I don't know if you know, is a, just a channel between two pieces of land. I think I knew that, but maybe I didn't. Um, Who knows? <laughs> um, so Block Island, it's somewhere at the very eastern end of Long Island. There's just a channel that you would drive your boat through on your on the way to Nantucket. Um, but yeah, I do like that you don't necessarily know. Um, but if you are a Long Island fisherman, you definitely know what that is. Yeah, I, I agree. So I think even it, I think it's good on so many levels because if, well, at least two anyway, at least two levels is good. <laughs> I'll say two. Yeah, because it's good if you if you are a fisherman, it's probably nice to hear the song and go, oh, this sounds about like uh, a reasonably accurate representation of what I do. And any professional likes to see that. And yes. regardless of what you do, when you see it portrayed, you like to see that somebody did a little bit of homework or knows what they're talking about. Yes, I feel like this song has a lot of parallels with uh, Good Night Saigon, where it was very much about Vietnam and the specifics of fighting in Vietnam. And this Down East or Alexa, I think is a much better version because he actually <laughs> lives on Long Island. Yeah. Whereas I don't think he ever went to Vietnam. Yeah. Um, so I, I think he nails things a little better. And he does it and he's not um, corrupted by your good observation that you made about um, the other song. What, 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 um, <laughs> was uh, that it had a lot of it had a lot of movie tropes in it. Yes. And uh, and that, you know, you can't help but if you've never actually been to war, you can't help but being a little corrupted by that or influenced at the very least. Like my thought about cowboys is movies. Yeah. And I yeah. Know exactly. It's not historically accurate. Yeah. And my, you know, my favorite stories of cowboys are things that did not happen. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. Um, but this doesn't. <laughs> You know, there's. It's not like there's a lot of fishermen stories in the movies. There's not a ton to, and in fact, when there are, they're usually uh, accurate because somebody really wanted to tell that story. Right. Yeah. Those stories don't rise to the top automatically. Yeah. There's not like 15 or 16 movies where people are ridiculously good fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> don't you hate it when two different studios release? A sword fishing movie at the same time. <laughs> right. You're like, oh, uh -oh. which of these? You wonder which, and you thought that the one was going to be the hit, 
And then it turned right. out. Right, so that's the one you went to. Yeah. And then uh, you went to work Monday. Yeah. Like, oh, I hope everybody's talking about uh, the town east of Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh no, we all saw a sword play. <laughs> like, fuck. God damn it. Uh, what happened to me? I went and saw Deep Impact. And everybody went to see Armageddon. And Deep Impact was probably better. I mean, they're both fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same thing happened with the day after tomorrow. There was another everything. Uh, you know, the environment's bad movies. Sure, sure. China Syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a great scene, by the way, in uh, The Day After Tomorrow where people are running away from the cold. <laughs> so funny. Uh, <laughs> watch it they're being chased by it somehow the cold is behind them oh yeah i there, i've seen a few where people are running away from lava which is always great too <laughs> and it's like burning the back of their sneakers but they keep running and they get away from it yeah it's great yeah oh yeah little <laughs> trivia uh if it makes it to your sneakers it's a lot hotter than you think it's going to be yeah yeah, it's going to affect your breathing as you run. Yeah, you're at the very least going to need new shoes. At the very least. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the next thing. Okay, do it. We took on diesel back in Montauk yesterday and left this morning from the Bell in Gardner's Bay. Like all the locals here, I've had to sell my home. Too proud to leave. I worked my fingers to the bone. I'm going to stop there. Um, great. Yeah. Um, I know Montauk. I've been to Montauk. And what it is from my point of view is basically the Hamptons, <laughs> um, slightly less uh, developed. Sure. But it has now become a place where you make uh, millions of dollars in New York City and then you go build a home in Montauk so you can get away for the weekend. Yeah. Um, and it used to, I think, be, it's the very point of Long Island. So it's a three hour drive from the city. And it used to just be like a shitty rock with a lighthouse on it. And, the, and then, then it's the ocean <laughs> until you get to the vineyard or Nantucket. Sure. So it was no man's land. Um, and now it's just a, a Tony getaway. Yeah. Um, so I like that he's sort of singing about it as the rock with the lighthouse uh, instead. Right. Um, and we left this morning from the Bell in Gardner's Bay. As I, that means nothing to me. I don't know where Gardner's Bay is. It's got a bell in it. That I'm again. This is one of those things. It's like. Oh, the fisherman nobody's talking about, I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's such a specific little detail. It's it's the kind of thing that wasn't in Goodnight Saigon. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, where you heard it and you're like, that's gotten I'm that's definitely something. I'm definitely on the outside of whatever he's talking about, and somebody's on the inside. And Whereas, uh kind of like when you hear somebody talk, say if, if you're, say, at an Irish pub and you're finally getting used to hearing people speak with a thick, thick Irish accent, yeah. you start to realize, oh, I'm starting to know what they're saying. And you yes. have that experience, which I had that experience while watching um, Love Island, but I wanted to sound classy and pretend it was in Ireland. You watch <laughs> Love, Love Island, I suddenly go, oh, okay, he's talking about having sex with that lady. I know what he's saying now. You were watching uh, Love Ireland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> well, you know, uh, anyway, any you know, number of stereotypes that are accurate that I could say right now. <laughs> yeah, I think we know them. <laughs> uh, so I could, so the next lyric, so first of all, I guess he, this, our character sold his boat or sold his home and lives on his boat just because he's getting by that way. I yes, or he's renting a little shithole somewhere. Yeah, because his family is still back on land. Oh yeah, true. But like all the locals here, I've had to sell my home. Yeah. Because um, they just can't—they can't make enough money anymore. Yeah. And 
rents are everything's super expensive out there now, which was not always the case. Yeah. Um, so the thing that but that's the first mention. I feel like that's the first mention in this song of like, uh, things are shitty. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not just going fishing. Everything is shitty, and uh, I'm doing this to survive. Yeah, and I yeah, and I and I wanted to do, probably implied, and you you do feel that he, ah, I would kind of wanted to do more than survive, but I'm not quitting. Right. So he says after working his fingers to the bone, so I could own my Down Easter Alexa. Um, so he sold his house so that he could just own the boat outright, which I wonder. I don't know if you know this. Is the is it? Are the, are many fishermen are fishermen so, sometimes like truckers? Because I have a lot of friends who are truckers, and um, some of them pay money to the comp the trucking company so that they can drive the rig. Right. And they get paid for delivery, but they work in this this what I consider a brutal circle because they don't own the damn truck. But they right. drive they drive truck and then you drive truck and then you have to um, pay for upkeep and all this stuff and you're earning this money. But at the same time, you're like, well, if it's the company's truck, it feels like you shouldn't have to pay to drive it, but you do. Right. Um, I wonder, I bet you that a lot of fishermen are in the in a similar, uh, I was going to say a similar boat and I wasn't going to do that on purpose, but... <laughs> I'm sure it's true. And I, you know, I would bet there are corporations that own fleets of boats and that just pay people not quite enough to do the actual fishing. And so there's, yeah, there's probably the top tier is you own your own boat. So you can sell your fish to whoever you want. Yeah. And, um, I can't, and, even, it, and I'm sure it's cartoonishly expensive to own your own boat, much like it is to drive a cab here. Yeah. It costs something like $100,000 to get a taxi medallion just so you can drive a cab, much less own it. Yeah. It's absurd. But uh, yeah, every effort is made. New to... York has some jacked up rules that are just must be hard to, like even grocery stores to get a, to get a liquor license. There's o in New York, there's only so many, which is yeah. weird. That's it's weird. weird. It's very weird. That's that you that just, like old mob stuff. Yeah. But yeah, there's way too much money here. And um, the people who have it don't want any encroachment from uh, working people. It's very, they make everything incredibly difficult for uh, yeah. anyone who's a startup. Yeah. And it's so weird. Like, there's, what do you mean there's only so many liquor licenses? You can just print one, fucko. I'll pay you for the license how is how is there a finite amount yeah don't know yeah because we said so yeah that seems but like the, such, yeah that's like the a, right restaurant chain i'm sure you can find one yeah you know same old story yeah i mean um, we're making we're making the same argument the song is making but less eloquently probably right <laughs> <laughs> But fair uh, but enough, yes. the song actually makes you sort of thoughtful because it's a good song. Well, here's what I will say is I did a little reading about this song beforehand um, and learned that he, Billy Joel, did in fact own a boat that he named the Down Easter Alexa Ray. Oh. Um, and had a captain because he wanted to just be in it. I think, you know, he grew up talking to those guys and admiring them and he wanted to be like part of the fleet. Okay. Um, and what he found was that there were so many rules and regulations and licenses and problems that they eventually abandoned that project. And he is a very wealthy man who is like Long Island's favorite son. And it was too stunt. It was too much for him wow. to figure this shit out. So they just eventually did away with it. And I think, and supposedly that was the inspiration to write the song. Oh man, that's, that's kind of amazing because he actually, wow. Yeah, it's like really from personal experience. Now, here's an interesting thing. I think I knew he owned a boat because he told a story once of, I don't know, remember where he was when he told the story, but it was a good story of him seeing, being on his boat and seeing the place where I think it was John Lennon lived. 
Oh, wow. You remember this story? I don't think I do. And thinking, oh, how great would it be to go up there and say hello? This is when John Lennon was still with us. And uh, how great would it be to go say hello? And uh, he didn't because that's John Lennon. And then he heard tell that John Lennon at one point had been where he lives. And it would be great to go say hello to Billy Joel. And he didn't because they both had a similar thought, which is, I don't want to bother that guy. Yeah, nobody wants to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> great. And I think that's, and now I'm remembering that happened on a boat. So yeah, he had a damn boat. I think at the time I imagined it was a little like, I don't know, like just a little fun boat, but it was probably pleasure craft. a pleasure craft. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but really if Billy Joel's on it, any boat's a pleasure craft. Good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, we have more? There's more there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me, I'll finish this because I just started this. So I could, oh, my down Easter Alexa. And I go where the, where the ocean is deep. There are giants out there in the canyons and a good captain can't fall asleep. I kind of feel like that's just poetic. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, I love uh, giants out there in the canyons. Yeah. I, again, sounds like fishing jargon. I don't know what he means by the canyons, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, uh, I am a little familiar with, uh, from like reading archaeology books and reading that kind of stuff that I will geek out on, that he, he is talking about the canyons under the water. Is, is, and uh it's it, the underwater is a crazy old place that's for sure <laughs> it's, it's insane like you'll be over a part and then uh you'll be over another part and if you're under, over one part it's a mile deep and you're in over another one part it's like it's like six miles deep or whatever a crazy yeah. amount of you'll never know yeah and not miles fathoms of course but i don't know how much a fathom is i don't either yeah. six feet isn't it six feet is a fathom is six feet? I think that's true. Okay. Sue, do you know? Is a fathom six feet? Because I feel like 12 feet is deep enough for a riverboat, <laughs> which is where Mark Twain got his name. Because um, when the water was 12 feet deep or less, they would yell Mark Twain to warn people. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. That's, That's where he got his name. He heard people yelling it on riverboats all the time. And he's like, oh, fuck, I'll make that my name. <laughs> and then every time he showed up, people would panic. All right. Um, <laughs> I like this part of the song also because I was thinking about this earlier when he's singing, there are giants out there in the canyons. He is really straining his voice. Yeah. Very high and very loud. And it sounds to me when you listen to the song, the, like the way you would talk over the sound of a crashing waves. Oh, to be heard. To be heard or yelling across the boat to somebody else. Oh. It really is evocative of that like vocal strain. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you watched, what's the movie? The George Clooney boat movie? Oh, the Perfect Storm. Perfect Storm. Thank oh, God you're here. My producer, <laughs> Perfect Storm. If you watch that movie, that whole movie is them yelling in that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what was my point? That was my whole point. It, it, you were, your point was that he's straining his voice and it's evocative of that. Of I, that. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you feel like you might be on the boat with him, which yeah. is nice. And, it, and I, uh, to go back to the earliest point I made about the song, it really helps that it doesn't feel overproduced. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, this doesn't feel like musical theater, like, like story of a boat, the musical, it doesn't feel like, um, it doesn't feel like a Hollywood thing. It feel, it does feel very much like he's singing as close to his understanding of the experiences he's got. But even though I'm sure he doesn't have that much experience of actually fishing, probably, I, maybe he might have worked, by the way, on the docks at one point because he grew up there as a kid. Very likely. Um, but even if he doesn't, he at least has 
an emotional connection to it. I'll bet he knows a lot of these guys. Yeah. To the to this day, I would bet. Yep. That's who he's drinking with more than like other rock stars. Yep, absolutely. And and it does resonate now, even just thinking about who he is, just this Long Island idiot who's just great guy. <laughs> who just, you know, just the moke. Just the moke, yeah. Um, all right, why don't you uh, pick up where we left off? A uh, good captain can't fall asleep. I got bills to pay and children who need clothes. I know there's fish out there, but where God only knows. They say these waters aren't what they used to be, but I've got people back on land who count on me. Um, it's very clean, by the way. There's, not there's a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. It, it's a very good job of... Uh, we were listening to the song before we started, and I was like, there is that drum beat Yeah. that's very, like slow and steady and it's a very loud drum it's not like a standard drum set drum i don't know what it is right but it, i said it sounds like uh when you watch the <laughs> old movies of like slaves rowing a ship and there's a guy with the drum who's oh. pounding it to keep the rhythm it sounds like that drum and it is like steady pressure on this captain to find a fish <laughs> yeah um and the stakes are very high and I know that part, I'm familiar enough that that really is a hell of a thing with fishing because you can go out and spend all your gas and all your time and all your labor. And if you don't come home with fish, all you did was spend stuff. Yeah, it really is uh, luck based in a lot of ways, which yeah. is a terrible way to make a living. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have your friend who's a professional gambler who I'm sure knows that. It is professional gambling, but with uh, boats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just not as stable. <laughs> just not as stable and dirtier and so gross. Yeah. Um, have but, you ever had, by the way, I'm sh maybe you probably have, you live in New York. Um, have you ever had a, a fish? that was just that day in the ocean? Yeah, yeah, many times. Not so much here, I mean, probably, but yeah. uh, certainly on certain vacations and stuff, and it is all the difference. A yeah. fish that's never been frozen <laughs> in its little life. Yeah. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I've had that a few times in my life and went, oh, now I understand why people like fish. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're obsessed with freshness. Yeah, like you and, I, you and I spent a lot of time in Arizona growing up. Yeah. And, uh, and fish ain't that good out there. No, it was mine were all in stick form. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a lot of uh, tartar sauce and lemon. Yeah. To cover up the decay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is better. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, wow, just thinking about that, now, what a brutal thing that is to go out and go, oh, we fished all day, what'd you get? Nothing. Nothing, yeah. Oh. I worked my ass off for 14 hours, and I had as many fish as I had yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's weird to have that kind of pressure on you and yet also have no control. Yeah. Lord. Um, I, which again he does a very good job of evoking how that feels yeah so um he says um so if you see my down easter alexa and if you work with the rod and the reel uh tell my wife i am trolling atlantis I didn't know that. Fantastic. still have my hands on the wheel um i love trolling atlantis yeah fantastic it does also feel like mythical you do feel like how huge and mythical it all feels to him yeah um out on the ocean you're not just like i'm trolling like uh, outside gardner's bay yeah <laughs> atlantis yeah um who's the the um the super friend from atlantis uh aquaman, aquaman. That's what I if that's what I would do if I was trolling Atlantis. I'd knock on their door and go, "Hey, hey, is Aquaman here?" And then I'd leave. 
<laughs> and leave a flaming bag of fish poop. <laughs> <laughs> Just what, floating on fire. That little, yeah, long, yeah. that little long line. <laughs> That little long line that makes you go, oh, I just, let me forget this if I want to go swimming. Let me just forget about this part. <laughs> uh, trolling Atlantis. I had to say a joke, and then I was like, how am I not remembering Aquaman's name? <laughs> Next week is verbal aphasia. That's right. I can't think of a damn word. It was a, a preview. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. I've got a great brain. <laughs> it's going great. Your brain is uh, still with us. Wow. And I still have my hands on the wheel. That's great imagery. You're out there 14, 18 hours. And nope, I'm not coming home yet because I got nothing. I got nothing. So I keep going. Because what am I going to do? I'm going to come home and we, we're, we're slightly poorer than we were yesterday. <laughs> and things are that much more desperate for tomorrow. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks. It really is gambling. Um, all right. You take it from there because it, it gets even more intense at this point. Yeah. Now I drive my down Easter Alexa more and more miles from shore every year. Since they told me I can't sell no stripers and there's no luck in sword fishing here. Now we're getting into environmental regulations. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can, I'm sure it's like catching a lot of stripers. I'm like, oh, I can't sell them because of the rules. So yeah. it's an extra hassle that you are catching fish, but the wrong kind. Yeah, I looked, I looked that part up because I wanted to know, because I, I don't know if I've ever eaten a striper, but um, the striped bass is that what that is? Or yeah, something else? yeah, it's a striped bass. Let me let me double check because I have that uh, tab open. Uh, the striped bass, also called a very big vignette, vognette, line slider, rock or rockfish, oh, is right. an andromus persiform fish of the family. Listen, stop doing to this to me, Wikipedia. I can't say these things. <laughs> um I, oh you know what's funny i have had it i knew it as rockfish yes same okay i feel like they change the names every once in a while yeah um to make it sound better in restaurants and now what's interesting too about yeah for sure what's interesting about rockfish is it is very much also kind of a Oh, a bottom of the barrel kind of fish anyway. It's not, it's just, a, first of all, it's just a white fish. It has a little more flavor than a tilapia, but uh, I, because now I know what we're talking about, but it isn't a high end fish. So I imagine the only way you could make money from it would be to right. catch the hell out of it. Yes. Which is probably why it's overfished and you're not allowed to sell them anymore. Yeah. It's a, no, uh, you know, I read somewhere that there's no such thing as a Chilean sea bass. I didn't know that. No. Which is a great, huge on menus, but it's actually a Patagonian toothfish. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, that's just good marketing. That's fantastic marketing. Yes. Although, I, you know, I, well, I'm probably in the minority, but I would order the hell out of a Patagonian toothfish <laughs> just to see what happened. Right. Do yeah. You know leave, leave the teeth. Yeah, let me see the mouth. I want the mouth there. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably would be great because it's a toothfish, not a teeth fish. So he's probably got, it's probably <laughs> like funny teeth. It's probably, yeah, just like one gold tooth, maybe. Yeah. So you enjoy your meal and then the face is hilarious. Right. Dinner and a show. Yeah. They probably put sunglasses on it or something. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to take you out for a Patagonian toothfish. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll order. We'll find a place that has Chilean sea bass on the menu, but we will order yeah. Patagonian toothfish and we'll see what this waiter is worth. Yeah. Let's see if he knows what he's talking about. Or she. Yeah, absolutely. Women, women can also be restaurant servers. <laughs> now, what kind of wine do I drink directly from the bottle, uh, Garcon, while I'm eating the tooth? <laughs> Something in a brown paper bag. 
brown paper bag or that one wicker basket kind of Chianti that's always shitty. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. The kind that's eventually a candle, always. <laughs> right, that has it's almost uh, transparent, but there's a little red in it. Yeah. <laughs> and you um, smell it, you go. There's no luck in sword fishing here. Is that a headache? Yeah. Um, I like he mentions working with the rod and the reel because um, you know you often you think about those boats and they're like oh they're just dropping nets and scooping up fish. Yeah, um, which is not the case. Um, certainly, with certain kinds of fish, certain with swordfish, you are out there <laughs> like literally fishing like a fucking weekender. Yeah, uh, hoping to pull one up. Yeah, those are for the big ones where you'll get actual money, right? Yeah. Where yeah, those, I don't know. You will get like I don't. I remember being hearing something like twenty or thirty thousand dollars for a swordfish. I watched a. a I don't remember what I was watching, but it was probably one of those cooking shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this fish, hey, you know, it's it's a decent man, worthless. Um, it was a decent sized fish, and, <laughs> but it was something like thirty grand or something. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And if I you guess, have, uh, have you seen the documentary "Hero Dreams of Sushi"? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone should watch that and you'll learn a lot about fish markets and prices and uh, it's kind of gross. Yeah, I went, there's a sushi place I go to now and then and they had, I think it was called Blue blue Tuna or something. It was the fancy tuna that they don't get very often and I decided to splurge and get it because it is pricey and then I was very happy I did. It was such a delightful piece of fish. It was, right. it was legitimately worth it. See, we're, I think we're the problem. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't tell. We're either the problem or we're the market. I am uh, I am in a lot of conversations or subjects, the problem, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the difference. Go ahead. I was a Bayman like my father was before. Stop for a second. Tell me what a Bayman is. I assume it just means a, a, a Long Island fisherman. Okay, I would assume so too. I was just wondering if there was some other thing. Can't make a living as a bayman anymore. There ain't much fu future for a man who works the sea, but there, but there ain't no island left for islanders like me. Oh, man. That's fucking great. Yeah. Uh, the ocean isn't working for me, uh, but neither is land. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And there ain't no island for islanders like me You've priced me out of my home. Right. And if you're him, he, I, the guy singing the song, priced me out of the character, <laughs> priced yeah. the character out of the island. Yeah. Um, yeah, insanity. Like I say, it's good that he's putting a spotlight on it, but also flip side, you're the problem. Yeah. Again, uh, he's doing a lot. Of, I don't know the details. I'm sure he's doing a lot of good work, but the, the end of the story is yeah. rich people move out there. <laughs> Everything gets more expensive and uh, working people can't live there anymore. Yeah, in his, to, to his credit, I think of it a little bit like analogous to say, um, when you trying to have a, a zero footprint on the environment doesn't necessarily mean you get rid of your car, but you find other ways to offset. So yeah. uh, maybe his charitable work and his efforts offset his big ass house. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure he's certainly not the worst offender. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld doesn't need to have a house on Long Island. No, I mean, you know, what's live in the city. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people do have insane homes out there yeah and it used to just be the hamptons and the rest of the island was pretty chill um, and it's of course expanding and expanding yeah. and montauk is now pretty much toppled um i know a lot of people who like work on our show and other shows have a second home on shelter island which is much more working class um but, you know, like I say, it's their second home. So I don't know how working class that is. 
right? Yeah. Sort of. um, they're modest little homes, but if uh, our costume designer lives there, that means uh, a bay man doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And if it's your second, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah for sure. Um, Although I work, you know, I work in, I'm, I got a blue collar job and I know people who own second stuff. So it depends on how they came about it and what they're doing. Cause I know people who have invested in property and I don't understand why they still work at my job, but they're, <laughs> it's so funny. Just, I don't know if you ever have this. I think there's a lot of people who have money who are running in fear of the day that they won't. Sure. Like I always, often think that Jay Leno is that. I think Jay Leno's a, had a crazy fear that somehow he was going to become poor. Yeah. And it um, didn't stop him buying cars. No, yeah, absolutely. But, but yes, he does have that vibe. And I think it's a lot of people who grew up poor and then found success. Yeah. And you always feel like, oh, somebody's going to come and take this away. Yeah. Because poverty is my true state. Yeah. Um, David yeah. Brenner. David Brenner, the comic who I think is a Long Islander, isn't he? Yeah, uh, he's definitely a New Yorker. Yeah. He had, did you ever read his book, uh, No One Ever Sees You Eat Tuna Fish? <laughs> no. It's a good book, and it's about how he just, he when he got money, he never wanted to eat tuna fish again, and he never wanted to have food in his house because, oh. because he imagined that people with money always ate at restaurants. Interesting. Yeah, to the point that he told the story of a woman coming over, and she was going to cook him a meal. He was like, oh, that's great. Let's put this in the fridge, and he took her out to eat <laughs> and want to do it. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh. Now, what do you think of the, so a lot of times, uh, you know, like in Big Shot, you did the Big Shot, he does a lot of voicey stuff. <laughs> and then and the end of this song, he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. It works for me in this song. It absolutely works. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's uh, some sort of allusion to seafaring songs. Yeah. Um, but I don't specifically know what it is, but it certainly makes sense. Um, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not as crazy as the big shot Italian voice. Right. Um, you just hear it and you're like, oh, this must be a Bayman because you've already been bombarded with things you don't understand in this song. Yeah. And you've, you sort of have gone along with him like, well, clearly he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And it works and it's, you know, it's the same thing where it sounds like he's yelling over something. Yeah. I think it works partly because it happens at the end of the song. It doesn't happen. It's not jarringly in the middle. Yeah. He doesn't have to come back and then sing more. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't. There's a lot of things that he sometimes does that he doesn't do in this song. There isn't a weird part in the middle that turns it into a different song. For yep. a second. There's no bridge. Yeah. And lord it's isn't that a good thing that there isn't yeah yeah it would it just would it's always like a swerve out of the way yeah it's always a rest stop and then you get back on the highway and yeah. Like, yeah this, this it has a good relentlessness to it this yeah song. Uh, which works out thematically because uh, his lifestyle is relentless yeah it seems to me that he writes this song from the vantage point of having a very clear idea of the song he wanted to write. Yes. There's no, there's no nonsense. <laughs> there's no nonsense. There's no pretending to be passionate about this. Yeah. Um, it's clearly all in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. A plus. Yeah. It, it's yeah. And, uh, and all, the lyrics are pretty um, concise too. There isn't a lot of extra crap. Just, uh, there's just there's no explanations. There's yeah. no like here's what a down easter is. <laughs> it's a type of boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> it's uh, he trusts the audience more than usual, which is nice. Yeah, um, maybe in the, if Billy Joel was a Viking, uh, he might have written the Trireme Alexa. I don't know. That's oh. an observation. <laughs> More than anything. Uh, observation without the comedy. Right. 
<laughs> I don't know why that amuses me so much. Just try reading Alexa. <laughs> Has that ever worked? The try reading Alexa? Yeah, if you ever play like in Minnesota, like a casino <laughs> that way, you could try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like the kind of uh, joke that would work a night that people had already decided you're fantastic and then they've decided you could do anything. Yeah. But that's the only night that works. <laughs> and then why push your luck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love nights like that. They're not as often as you'd like, but they happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> So uh, what do you think? Oh, right man. Behind there. See the monkeys. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know any specific episodes. No, that's need... okay. But so what's behind them? Uh, looks like a flying saucer yeah. or a UFO. Uh, it's uh, the space monkeys. That's right. Are they the space monkey mafia? Is that a lyric? It's a lyric from uh, We Didn't Start the Fire. Oh, funny. Um, they're also from We Didn't Start the Fire, but sure, because they're also um, Space Monkey. Ba, ba, ba. They're, uh, I just thought Space Monkey, but that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what else comes before, but it's Space Monkey Mafia. <laughs> yeah, Space Monkey Mafia. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Uh, which was the name of a band in Chicago for a while. Okay. After that song came out, which uh, really made me laugh every time I saw it in the reader. <laughs> I was now, like, why well, go see Space Monkey Mafia? Now, Space Monkey, they're, they're, they were talking in the, we didn't start to fire. He's probably talking about uh, the Russian Space Monkey, right? Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. But he doesn't talk about anything in that song. It's just a long list. And yeah. Mafia was the next thing on the list. Space monkey mafia, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like it's one thing. It really made me laugh. <laughs> it's, oh, I every now and then I think about pulling the trigger on saying, "All right, we're going to talk about we didn't start to fire." But it's such a, it's. I'm not saying we never will. It's just all you're talking about is. So then he said this thing. You're right. So here's what that. We'll, we'll just be on Wikipedia all night. Yeah. Well, what was that? Yeah. Well, you, hey, you know who JFK was. JFK blown away. Well, historically, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll talk about that movie for 20 minutes with Kevin Costner. <laughs> yeah. You might think you want that episode, 38 listeners, but you don't. Yeah, I don't think you do. Yeah. I, we'll I, do, if we get, the first time we get 100 listeners, we'll do the first uh, verse. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That seems reasonable. That Not seems bad for an empty promise. Yeah, I looked at the uh, I looked at those lyrics too. It's a lot of damn lyrics. It's a lot, yeah. He didn't uh, cut any corners. He didn't leave much out. And there's a lot of baseball in it, as though that were part of history. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is if you're a Mets fan. Yeah, there's there's a lot of pop culture, just garbage. Yeah. It really then, Doris Day is the second thing. Yeah. The one th I <laughs> I I tried to figure out looking at it, and I was like, is there meaning behind the order of in which things occur? And I don't think there is. Really just like syllables that fit. Yeah. This thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Yep. This thing rhymes with this other thing. Yep. And now you've seen it live. It's a hell of a good tune live, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Got the flames on the screen behind him. Yeah. <laughs> it's very literal. He's very literal. <laughs> uh, which is great. Yeah. And musically, it's good. It's really good music. Yeah. It's jaunty. Yeah. It's an interesting point to make. Yeah. Which is like, things have always happened in lists. <laughs> we didn't start that. <laughs> there have always been lists in history. <laughs> <laughs> the song is about lists <laughs> i like that idea uh <laughs> it's about listing things oh things that don't belong on the same list maybe yeah but lists yeah 
Most that rhyme. Allergies at one point. Oh, yeah, you got to list your allergies. You're right. <laughs> Here's a list of side effects. <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight's trivia question is about this song, about Down Easter Alexa. Okay. It was a thing I learned today, and I should have known earlier. Who plays the violin on this song? Oh. And I'm going to... Uh, Yo-Yo Ma? Yo-Yo Ma's a cellist. Oh. But you're on the right track in that there are like probably two famous violinists. But wouldn't it be great if Yo-Yo Ma played the violin on this? Oh my God, what a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you played it like a cello, especially. <laughs> <laughs> His knees would be so close together. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I'm out of gas. Who yeah. was it? It's, uh, uh, it's Zach Perlman. Oh, okay. That's who you want if you need a violin. Wow. And it is fantastic violin. Yeah, it, it is. Really the song work. Wow, it's impressive. So it's funny. Then you go, yeah, you you made it for sure because you were already very famous. But you asked Itzhak Perlman to be on your album. He said yes. Yeah, great. Wow. Which is a, a lo coming a long way from uh, the Bridges LP, where he was like, "I'm going to do a bunch of duets." Okay, only three people called me back, and one of them is Cindy Lauper. <laughs> <laughs> he's moving up wow that's pretty great yeah yeah God bless. I, and i would say that that also plays to why it doesn't sound overproduced because you got an actual just accomplished musician to do this part rather than trying to create an effect or whatever that you could pe people have done that in the studio sure he sounds terrible yeah, no, just get the best person at that instrument and just record it. Yep. And then stay out of the way. Yeah. And then his vocals, it's strange how good his vocals work for this. And he's a fine singer, not any insult meant, but just that it's even his limitations play to the song's strengths. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a song about uh, Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Who else is? Who else could sing it, really? Um, like in Les Mis, the, you know, you know the song "Bring Him Home." Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine heard that song, divorced of what it was in, and he didn't know the musical. And he goes, "I don't like the song because the guy's just sounds like some sad old man." And I was like, "Well, let me tell you." <laughs> and I told him the Great story. News. Yeah, I told him <laughs> the story, and he went, "Oh!" And then he went and listened to it. And he was like, "I was wrong." And it just that the, the vocals matter in the context. Yeah, well, yeah, context matters for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it really works in his favor this time. Yeah, it absolutely does. Now, the song I picked for next week um, is, uh, I don't know, I may end up going through this whole album eventually, but uh, I don't even know if I remember how the song goes, but I was looking at the lyrics and so I will enjoy listening to it. And uh, it's Christy Lee. <laughs> Christy Lee. Yeah. All right, great. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you, yeah. like, do you like that song? I do. Good. Yes. It's a real rocker. Yeah. I was really taken with just looking at the lyrics. I was like, oh, it reminded me of like... Um, it's very similar to Easy Money, I think. Yeah, it reminded me of like a Jolene or a song like that. It's a story song about this guy, you know, or Bad Bad Leroy Brown. It reminded me <laughs> yeah, has yeah. that kind of vibe. And I don't know if that's what he was going for, but I was like, I just look at the lyrics. I was like, this sounds like a fun song to talk about. Great. Yeah. I'll be there. I will also be there. Oh, and great. I will not remember right away what number episode it is. <laughs> fantastic but you will remember you're jim i'm alex and you're alex and those are the monkeys and those are the monkeys and they are space monkeys <laughs> thank thanks for tuning in bruno
Big ups.